Some people work things out yeah. and some just don't know how to you do it. You give me Bruce Springsteen right here. Just don't wait till the water runs dry. We might watch our whole lives pass us by. Let's don't wait till the water runs dry. We'll make the biggest mistake of our lives. Now everybody, here we don't go sway do from right baby. to left. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Here we go. No, no, now they can see the tears in our eyes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's Herbert. Mm-hmm. And you're listening to the About Last Night podcast, you slippery little son of a bitch. Hey, all you cats and kittens, Adam Ray here. Welcome back to the About Last Night podcast. That is the show. If you're new to the show, click subscribe right here. You know what to do. Just click that button. It feels good. Use whatever finger you like. That's what she said. And make sure you're a part of the show every Monday. Special episodes and clips are hitting the YouTube page. Uh, subscribe on Spotify and iTunes as well if you just want to have your ears get penetrated with the uh, the sounds of the show. Today's episode is one of my faves. Uh, before we get into that, I want to tell you I'm going to be on the road. Ooh, I'm on the road because I've got a special I'm shooting at uh, Comedy on State in Madison, Wisconsin, September 21st through the 23rd, my new stand-up special, um, and I can't wait. Uh, September 21st through the 23rd, Madison, Wisconsin, Comedy on State. Tickets at AdamRayComedy.com. But before that, I'm going to be in St. Petersburg, Florida, September 8th and 9th at Coastal Creative. Come out and see your boy. And, uh, and of course, Philly Punchline, September 14th through the 16th. And then a bunch of tour dates with Sal Volcano, Matt Reif, and myself headlining uh, in addition to those shows all throughout the fall and the rest of 2023 at AdamRayComedy.com. Of course, please check out the special I just dropped, Adam Ray Live from Portland on my YouTube page. Check that shit out right there. A lot of fun, a lot of new material you won't see uh, on the road and in the special I'll shoot in September. Check that out right now. And also, the Dr. Phil Live with Bill Burr is on my YouTube channel as well. A lot of fun. Bill and I are already talking about doing a, a follow-up uh, album to that one. So um, make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel so you can enjoy all the uh, goodies coming your way. Today's episode, man, I met this guy through the incredibly talented Wayne Brady, friend of the show. Uh, he did a uh, live variety show at the Bourbon Room here in Hollywood, and I met our guest, who is a uh, a four-time Grammy winner, a Billboard and American Music Award winner, uh, one of the biggest selling acts and recording artists of all time, part of a group called Boys to Men. Heard of them? It's Sean Stockman, ladies and gentlemen. I met this guy through Wayne Brady. We chummed it up. We became quick homies, and I said, dude, you got to come do the pod. You're just... Uh, you know, a guy I've been a fan of since I, uh, you know, knew how to dry hump uh, at Kellogg Middle School. And um, Chris DeLeon and I used to pretend to sing uh, songs uh, as best we could to impress girls. And uh, and it'd be great to have you on the pod. The episode's incredible. I can't wait for you guys to hear it. Sean and I closed it out by singing Water Runs Dry, which was a sweet dream. And, uh, and it was just a great, interesting, fascinating, inspiring chat. We got silly. We got deep. And um, I can't wait for you guys to hear it. Sean doesn't do a lot of pods, so uh, it's a special treat to get a, a sit-down with him. Follow Sean at uh, Sean Stockman Official on Instagram. Um, and, of course, go see Boys to Men on tour, boystomen.com. And Sean is about to announce a solo tour, so stay tuned for that. Follow me at Adam Ray Comedy on Instagram, Twitter, Threads, TikTok. Um, and all the other BS. Of course, AdamRayComedy.com for all your Adam Ray merch and tour dates. And, uh, and yeah, please come see me and Madison. Do the special. September 21st to the 23rd. The title, I'm still working it out, but I'll announce that soon. Um, we got a lot of great episodes coming up as well. Melissa Villasenor, Adam Devine, uh, Michael Bennett from the Seattle Seahawks. A lot of goodies coming your way. Make sure you subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your lovers, tell your haters. But now sit back, relax, and enjoy a brand new episode of the About Last Night podcast with boys to men, Sean Stockman. Guys, welcome back to the show. I got my man Sean here. What up, man? Dude, appreciate you doing this. No, thank you. Thank you. Listen, you've asked me to come to a couple things and... Because I wasn't able to, because of 
prior engagements. Oh yeah, you're a busy man. Uh, yeah, and, and thank God. But I had to come because if I refused <laughs> to do something, not even refuse, if I didn't come to one more thing that you asked me to do, <laughs> man, this, I would have been blacklisted. Yeah. Hey, why you got to bring race into this? Yeah. <laughs> No, man. I mean, for the shows, it's like, well, we, you know, we met uh, through Wayne Brady, mutual mm -hmm. homie. Mm -hmm. Wayne, uh, I mean, I don't know how he stands in your life, but I mean, arguably probably the probably the top most talented dude I think I've ever met. He's amazing. I mean, just like as far as being able to do it all. He can do anything. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think I even made a joke when I went up there. I was like, you, I was like, you're probably going to be showing up later with my Uber Eats. Like this motherfucker has every job. <laughs> He's checked every box. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but uh, we were both doing something on his uh, variety show at the Bourbon Room. Yeah. And I mean, you know, real. Tr you didn't know who I was, but I mean, dude, how many times do you meet people uh, in, I guess, just our business from doing things like that, that you then end up, um, you know, keeping in touch with? It's such a yeah. rare thing, at least for... For me, I think it's in comedy. You're meeting so many people before, after shows, yeah. and you're probably the same way. But now you guys are obviously, you know, been at such a level to where it's not like you know during meet and greets you're having like an amazing quick little chat with someone and then like developing a lifelong friendship. But maybe yeah. I don't know. Sometimes it's like that. It's rare though. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, you you meet people all the time in this business. Yeah. And, and some people you're actually fans of, and and you know you you exchange niceties and and you know you keep it moving you might might even exchange numbers but that's also yeah kind of a formality you got to feel it out too y yeah yeah you got to feel it out but sometimes it's more like hey let's exchange numbers you know and you yeah. may not ever call them totally or they might not ever call you oh bro but... when we swap numbers i was like all right here we go like yeah. here we go well, see, that's, the, and you... that's the difference with me yeah like and and the difference with my guys is like we we don't we're not hollywood in that sense yeah if we exchange phone numbers we really want to be in touch with you. I get we want it. to talk to you and, and possibly that. do business with you because yeah. that's the beauty of this industry. <clears throat> you know, you create alliances within these these social gatherings and things of that nature, and, and you run into people that you might not have thought you ever would run into. Oh, yeah. And, you know, sometimes some interesting things come out of it. Uh, you just mentioned uh, off air that you went to uh, Cabo with your wife and yeah. uh, and her gals, yeah. which I want to just pull back up because I want to commend you on the going uh, with your wife and her gal pals, yeah. which I think, first of all, you got Cabo as the backdrop, so yeah. people are probably hearing this being like, all right, it doesn't sound that bad. No. But, you know, like you were saying, there's always, it's a roll of the dice with who your wife's pals are yeah. and how they've got to be bringing it to the table on, on every front to where you can feel comfortable it's not like you were going to chaperone. You were going so that, like you said, your wife could have the best of both worlds, you and Correct. her homies. Yes. Um, but <laughs> like you were saying, there's always like, and I think every girl probably deals with this. Every guy has a guy that's just fucking off the rails. Yeah. You go to Vegas with six dudes. Yeah. One guy's going to be in the one. fountain at night one, right. like <laughs> calling you from the spearmint rhino being like, can you guys pick me up and bring right. my debit card? Right, you know? right, right. Exactly. And, and, and it's the same thing. I'm, and again, these are things I hear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's just things I hear, yeah. but you know, sometimes you know you'll have some homegirls, yeah, you know, and, and and they all go to a girls' trip, yeah, and there's always, a, oh. you know, they they're they're characters, yes, okay, bro, you got the responsible one, you got the prude, yeah, you got the the whore bag that yep. basically is just going to fuck yep. pretty much anybody, anyone or anything, find, anything, yeah, you got the drunk, yeah, you, <laughs> you got the one with kids that's looking to maybe find a balance between the drunk and the whore, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's it's all of that, and then all of those characteristics in one room, yeah, you know, sharing a bathroom and all kinds <laughs> of other stuff like is it's kind of wild, and you know, I, I'm with with my wife's friends, they've been friends for over two decades. It's awesome. So and I've known them almost as long. Yeah. So um, it's almost like me hanging out with a bunch of my sisters. Yeah. And they're cool. Like, you know, I hate to say it, but they're like dudes in a sense where, you know, they hang out, yeah. they kick it and they don't want any drama. They take care of each other. Oh, man, they look huge. out for one each other, one another. Like they it's really a, a, a sisterhood with my wife's friends, which made it easy for me because, yeah. you know, it was no extra you know, uh, pandering that you had to do. Yeah. It was just kind of, we there, we kicking it. We had, we had a nice villa. Everybody had their own rooms and, you know, we kicked it and, and we went to the beach and we got, you know, I don't need to get any blacker, but you know, <laughs> I got dark. Well, I don't know about that. Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm, I'm melanated yeah. enough. And, uh, <laughs> and, um, you know, and, and, you know, it was, it was a good time. We went out, we had drinks and, you know, it was, it was dope. Can you relax? Because I feel like for me, when I go on vacay, 
I think you're the same way, man. You're always working. Mm-hmm. You're, I mean, the amount of uh, shows that you guys do, or or even like you know corporate dates or appearances, or you know, I see you. Uh, there were some things I was looking up on YouTube of you, um, even just pulling up a thing where you met some young kid and you dug his voice, or then you guys laid down a, um, yeah, yeah. a water runs dry yeah, yeah, cover. Yeah, that's right, that's right. It's just like you're always in the. And even stuff like that, I don't feel like you're doing because you feel like you need to do it. You're just like a creative dude that loves to, um, you know, uh, uh, play in the world that he's created for himself, right? Yeah, and yeah. I feel like I got a lot of that too. So if I go on a vacay, there might be a couple of days where I can really chill. Mexico is a different story. I feel like it f- almost forces you. There's no comedy clubs really around. That's right. And I mean, you could find. I'm sure you could set up shop and ask them and say, "Hey, I'd love to plug in and play a set." I'm sure they'd have no problem with it. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I I I thought about bringing my guitar with me. Yeah, and I said, "Don't do it." I said, "Don't do it." Did you say, "Don't do it"? Baby, yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, <kind> of, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me ask you this: When you just when when you're writing songs, mm-hmm. does it have to be like for me? I don't sit down like some comedians and though I'm gonna write from two to four today. It's just like. I'm living a life worth writing about, and I hope that I'm conditioned enough at this point to, if something funny happens in the convo today, that I'm yeah. gonna like make a note of it and then try it out on stage tonight. Do you yeah, know what I'm saying? How I, do you? I am a stereoty- stereotypical artist. I don't have a clock. Like, and and to be honest, most of the songs that I, I've written, some of which have been songs that's been on albums and, and things like that, like it would be waking up at two thirty three in the morning. God damn. Like, literally. Like I, I Because you saw you, it in your dream or what? No, it's one of those things where you kind of get the understanding of why artists, especially singers or rappers or whatever, get high. Right? They get high because there's a state of euphoria that it puts you in where it relaxes every part of your body, mm. including your brain muscle. So you have less inhibitions when you're inebriated or whatever. Obviously, pe- some people take it too far, yeah. but that's the idea. So when you're asleep, it's kind of like being high. So in the midst of working and being a dad and a husband and stuff that you're doing outside of boys to men business and things of that nature, a lot of times you may not have time to write. Yeah. So when you're asleep, that's when you're most relaxed. So my brain is the most relaxed when they sleep, and sometimes a melody will come up in the midst of sleeping. Get the fuck I will out literally here. get up, play it, put it on record so I don't forget it, put it in my phone or write it yeah. down, and then fall back to sleep. Wow. And, and there, there have been- What tracks have you done that for? Or have um, you guys done that too? There was a song that I wrote for the guys years ago, and it actually was a single. It was called Pass You By. And it came to me in my sleep. And it literally, I just woke up, I just kind of wrote it down yeah. and then fell back to sleep. And then I woke up and I just heard it and I was like, yeah, this might work. Made him feel that life was now complete. Now some days have passed, the nights gone by. And there's a lot of instances like that, but that's one in particular that uh, I remember. Wow. That you know, you just wake up and you just re- your brain kind of goes into, I guess, what is most pleasurable. And I love my job. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I I'm I'm a songwriter all day. Yeah. Like we were just in Spokane and unfortunately, I'm sorry people of Spokane that we had to cancel the show. <laughs> no, cuz of the cane? Cuz it cuz <laughs> because of the fires. Oh yeah. There was a lot of fires in there and the air quality was terrible. We were perform we were supposed outdoors. to perform outdoors. Yeah. So, I'm sitting there waiting for my road manager to tell me to get going cuz we can catch our flight. And I looked out in the sky and I wrote a song. I had my guitar and I wrote a record Damn. about what I saw. So a lot of times it's just yeah, it's situational and, and it's not. It, we don't have a clock. Like it's literally just what we see and and what we experience. And we either write it, jot it down. A melody might pop up while I'm driving. Whatever. It just it's just whenever. And you drop everything when that happens, right? If you get if an inspiration hits yes. you, you just got like you even got to pull over if your guitar's in yes. the back and like yes. just absolutely yeah. There's no time or you clock. try to remember it in some way and you try to transcribe it vocally 
to your phone. Oh, for sure. And you try to decode it. That's way more profound, by the way. Comedians try to do that, but our brains uh, get past us so quick that I'll wake up and, and almost like see myself on stage doing a joke that I've never done, and then I'll wake up and write it down in the morning, and it'll say like falafel titties, and I'm like, what does that mean? You know what I'm saying? Mm. But I saw the joke yeah. in my dream. Yeah. See, but that's what makes you guys so, <laughs> so incredible to me. Cause, yeah. Like I have a lot of comedian friends. Yeah. And 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 I tell them like, I don't know that part of my brain right. that that can actually like you guys are alchemists you guys can see a situation you know and make a joke and, and make it, it funny yeah. Yeah. like like i don't i would never know how to do that shit like like that is like the, i mean it's all just reps right i mean it's i get yeah i guess but i don't know i mean the way that you were born with your pipes right do you feel that or did you i mean you obviously trained but like do you feel like that I was born with this comedy yeah. gift, and you were no, born no, with your musical. No, no, you had to. Be, you, yeah. you, you were you were born to be funny, and and that that's the that's the gift. That's what makes you who you are. Like mm. you know, that's that's your stamp. And because I couldn't do that, I could perform in front of a hundred thousand people and sing and not be nervous. Put me on a on a stage <laughs> and say, "Hey, you got to tell a joke for three minutes." <laughs> the fuck? I'd be like, "Yo." <laughs> Yeah, like I, I can be. You were hilarious that night at the Bourbon Room. Well, though. no, I can be slapstick funny yeah. in a sense where it's like I'll say something for a couple seconds, yeah, yeah. or I may be able to play off somebody. Right. I can do that. Yeah. That I can do, but to keep someone's attention for sixty minutes, yeah, just yeah. talking and making them actually laugh, I would shit my pants. It's so, well, that could be your act. I mean, there. <laughs> We'll be right back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, there is. Catch me at the comedy it, <laughs> There is something. It's so funny when you say that because I, I mean, you're probably the same way where it's like when people say that to you, you know, you get so into the, the monotony of the day to day of just doing it now. You've been, I mean, singing what? Probably professionally. I know you started when you 30 were. Years. 30, 30 years. 32 years. God damn. So like there's no, there's no part of you that, that even probably. I mean, do you allow for nerves when you perform at this stage, or is it just all? I just all, don't. Yeah. Like, it just doesn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you've been, I'm, and, and this is not a flex, I've been on every type of stage. Yeah. There's no stage that intimidates me. Yeah. Whether big, small, medium, whatever. I've been on every single one. Shitty stages, great stages. Yeah. 100,000 people, Award 10 Award shows with pressure it, it, through it, the yin yang. Yeah. It does not, it does, like, the nerves isn't I'm nervous, it's I'm excited. You know what I'm saying? And I don't wanna like I'd wanna get it done. Let's let's go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know that type of thing. Yeah. I, I I don't like I, I hate the pregame of having to wait. Me too. On stage. Let's just let's well, I like just to show go. up almost ten minutes before I gotta hit the stage yeah, at the yeah, venue. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I know you guys I, can't do that, but you well, sound yeah, everything. I know. But 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 sometimes there'll be instances where it was like, yo, let's when do we go on seven? Let's get there at seven forty-five. Let's already be dressed. Let's get the, the you know get to the side of the stage. Let's go, and then you know and be out. And it's the funny thing too, because just like you said, it's like muscle memory. Yeah. You know where it's like, I could be performing in the middle of a show, and I'm doing dance moves, or I'm playing a guitar, or whatever, and I'm thinking about everything but the show. I'm like, man, I hope room service is open. <laughs> yeah. When, You're singing when, I'll when, make love to you and thinking yeah, about if they I'm got beef stroking off. Burger. Yeah, turkey burger. <laughs> I'm thinking of a turkey burger. Like I'm like, you know, it's great and we're having a good time, but damn <laughs> I sure want a turkey burger. You end up seeing someone in the crowd that's eating a sandwich and you're like singing like, to yeah, them and they're yeah, like, he's singing like, to me. You're like, no, I'm just standing no, at your I'm fucking just food at right your now. Taco. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, so it's like, yeah, it's, it, you, it just becomes. Well, that's the challenge is to like to keep it fresh every night, right? Well, yeah, that that's that's the great thing about honestly our fans that like with and and the the repetition of you know doing it in different cities because. Every city gives you something different. One thousand percent. So it's always something that you can pull from. And even when we say a prayer before the show, like I ask, you know, let's just try something different. Sometimes I'll just do a riff that I'd never even practiced and just kind of just try it. Mm. And if it screws up, like that's how comfortable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. it's more like let's have fun. Yeah. Let's have fun. Been doing this a, a long time. Everybody knows this shit. We all know these songs, right? <laughs> All right, cool. So we're gonna try some shit, all yeah, right? Yeah. And, and, and you got to. You know what I mean? And 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 a lot of times that's what we do on the fly. It's kind of like, let's just try that. If it doesn't work, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, totally. But you the, you're right. The fans are so w- with you. You know, um, yeah. my boy Joey McIntyre. No, you know Joey mm-hmm. too. I've um, you know gone to a bunch of their shows, and like you guys have a similar f- fan group as far as like yeah, everybody yeah. is so. <clears throat> everybody is so uh, has just stayed with you, and yeah. then you're always picking up new fans, yeah. which is so cool because you guys are staying in it, staying creative, continuing continuing to stack on to what you've already like built. Um, and you know, I remember going to see you guys at Key Arena in Seattle back in the day. And then mm-hmm. when I saw you at the Nokia, uh, I think when I was in school, you guys started doing your Motown run. Mm-hmm. What was cool about that is the it was the first time I really and I pr- pr- was older and more um, cognizant to it. But the um, the fun that you guys were having in between tunes, like and, yeah. and how you would start doing with Water Runs Dry and the the finger snapping thing, and just yeah. you're you're a a showman, so it really like. Um, I think can't, comes easy to you as far yeah. as like having banter in between songs because we all know some artists, some rock stars like want to do that and it just fucking, it just takes away more than it adds and right. you're like, man, maybe just power through the set list right. because I don't like people, I don't think people necessarily are coming to hear you guys fuck around but they, y- you do almost want it at a certain point and yeah. when you know you guys to be so smooth and cool, it's like, all right, I want to kind of hear them shoot the shit for a minute. I'm a fan of music. Yeah. I'm a fan of comedy. I'm a fan of of people who understand the minutia of entertainment. It's not just delivering the joke, but adding a human part of it. Yeah. Like where it's it feels like whether you went through that or not, I believe that you did. Like it's it's getting a piece of you mm. of of who you are as a person, not just as a comedian. People come to laugh but at the same time, the, the the charm that makes great comedians like yourself is you leave feeling like you we know you a little bit better. Right. You understand? Yeah. Like and and so I think that's part of what we do. Like, yes, we're gonna sing End of the Road. But in between that, you're gonna get a human side of us. You're gonna see how we kind of play around and joke about certain things and 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 Sometimes I'll poke at certain current events about mm. certain shit, nice. and, and they laugh and you know, that type of thing. It's funny because I was just watching the Beastie Boys mm. yesterday, like on YouTube. Like they did this uh, this performance in Scotland, Glasgow, in 1999, and just to see how the three of them play off each other, you know, a stage and around. Yeah, and they it was, and I went to a Beastie Boys show once, and I, I had the best time. I was exhausted at the end of the show. Oh yeah, but. I kind of consider my group like them in a sense where they know where to be on stage. Mm. It's like automatic. Like I don't have to look and and see Wanye and say, hey, should I be? We just know. You know what I'm saying? Because we've been doing this so long together that like we already know, okay, he's here, he's here, so I got to be here. Okay, he went there, so I'm going to go there. So he went there. You know what I'm saying? So it's automatic. Like so, no space on the stage is empty. That's He's crazy. Under- yeah. It's, Do you but- ever? Uh, is that ever? Um, I mean, are you aware of that all the time? Yes. Like, and you're like, man, this is special. The yes. fact that he just did that, we didn't yes. talk about it, yes. and I just knew what to do. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes I'll go on stage or go off stage and say, "Damn, man," you know. And this is just in our private time, and it's, it, it it has nothing to do with being pretentious at all or anything like that. But I will sit down and just tell the guys, man, man, we fucking dope, man. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like that. That was like dope. Like, you know, you 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 heard me, <clears throat> you heard me fall off on a note, and you caught me, or you know, you saw me do something, and you kind of covered. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know that type of thing. Like, we just it's instinctive, and that's a testament of how long we've been doing. It. Yeah. You know, and, when you can finish each other's sentences musically, much, right? Uh, much. Is there? Um, all right, so. I, I've, you guys start. You grew up in Philly, obviously. Mm-hmm. You rep. Do you, you feel like you rep Philly pretty hard? All day. All day. Yeah, I, I rep Seattle real hard, and I'm starting to get to a point where I'm becoming synonymous with how. I mean, I'm just always rocking something, Seattle. I saw that. I see the old yeah. school signs. Man. <clears throat> oh yeah, man. Yeah, um, that's fly. And uh, <laughs> you know, we'll get them back in a couple of years. Is what they say. I hope so. Yeah. Um, who were you guys when you came up? And you guys were. I know you guys did a lot of NBA shit. Like, were there? I mean, yeah. are you a big Iverson guy? I mean, Absolutely. who's yeah? That's the sure. homie, actually. No way. What up, Chuck? No and, uh, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, big AI fan. Yeah, huge. I mean, and, and you guys did a bunch of NBA. Didn't you like? Yeah, I mean, anthems did all the time. Yeah, all the time. But, I mean, <clears throat> and and we we've we've made alliances and and long term friendships with with Jordan and Magic and um, let me think AI, 
Um, What's Jordan like? He cool, man. Is he? He cool. Hella competitive. We've done a few uh, <laughs> golf tournaments with him, and I made it a, a, a note to never be on his team. <laughs> 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 he ain't cussing Bro, me I've out. I've heard like, that. He's brutal. Oh, man. So, so you know, and I'm not that good of a golfer. <laughs> so I was like, nah. And he doesn't care. Yeah, and he doesn't care. He's like, you, you're you here? No, he's he's a monster. Wow, dude. In a good way. Like, of you know course, what I mean? of like, course. A lot of people get all bent out of shape. I don't know if you saw uh, The Last Dance. Oh, yeah, I loved it. Yeah, it was dope. Unbelievable. And and a lot of people, even some of his own teammates, kind of got caught feelings because of yeah. how he uh, uh, conducted his his business. But he's a lion. Yeah, man. And it, it's the reason why he's the goat. It's, it's the exact it, reason. It, it's, it's the mentality that he pushed on others to be great like him. It's just in him. So I understand that. Yeah. Because, you know, we pushed ourselves too. And we got pushed. You know what I'm saying? To, to be who we are today and which is why we're part of why we're around now because we have it's a mentality to be to want to be great where were you um where'd you find music in philly like what was the is it from the family is it from oh, just, definitely the family yeah first. it was the family it was uh the city right you know we we're known for the philly sound oh like yeah kenny gamble and leon huff who basically created the ojs and teddy pendergrass and you know in, even in our sports you know, uh, you know, when whenever uh, the Eagles or or the Sixers would go somewhere, they would always play a "Ain't No Stopping Us Now." Oh yeah, like by McFadden and yeah. Whitehead. Oh, so yeah. that was like, you know, a, 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 a Phillies anthem for any time a, a a a team would get to the playoffs or the championship or whatever or the World Series or the Super Bowl, they would just replace the team with you know the That's Sixers amazing. with the Phillies oh, or the yeah. Phillies with the oh, Eagles. Yeah. You know what I mean? That yeah. type of thing. So. But yeah, man, like Philly is is rich in music, and and a lot of famous artists came from Philadelphia as well. So, but did you have family members that kind of showed you stuff when you were a kid? Like, For sure. yeah, like, you went to it, shows or what? Well, it was a little bit of both. Like, um, they would show us stuff. They would just play stuff around the house. And thinking back, like, you could just kind of tell that you were born to do certain things because a lot of people didn't have to show me too much. I just kind of magnated to it. Yeah, and just music that I liked, I would just kind of just stick and just listen to it mm -hmm. all day or try to find it in some sh way, shape, or form. I yeah. stayed with headphones or record players playing or something like that. I was just a music person for as long as I can remember. Did you go to school for it? I did. Yeah. You um, went to performing arts school, right? Performing arts yeah. high school. But even before then, um, I was part of this prestigious choir called the Philadelphia Boys Choir. Wow. And... That sounds I, fancy. Yeah, no, it, it was it was pretty dope because I think at eight years old they flew us to London, and we sang, uh, you know, uh, songs at the cathedral where Prince Diana and Prince Charles got married. Holy and, shit! Like, yeah, like we were invited to this, and we we sailed on the QE two, and we had performances there. And this is when I was eight. Fuck, so dude, so no, nah, it, it was it was a a you got unintentional to the good grooming. Life. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so that just kind of built up the the love for it man and then it just went from there to junior high and the high school where i met the fellas it's almost kind of um imperative to get a little taste of it when you if you've got a love for it at that age mm -hmm. to get it's the same way when you're doing open mics as a comedian it's like you know i'd say about two three years in i got a chance to do uh some shows uh in north hollywood there's a club called the haha -Ha on the weekend shows and i still wasn't you know uh ready to be doing uh be a regular at a club by any means but met the owners and they were like we're gonna throw you on from time to time yeah. and even just getting on a a full sold out show of, of paying customers that wasn't an open mic of comedians only yeah. was so uh necessary because it gave me a little like oof and i would rise to the occasion and sometimes i'd follow you know damon wayans and just wow. be like fuck man and like this is and he would just murder and he'd do you know and everyone's doing 10 50 minutes he'd pop up do 45 so not i'm a funny yeah. damon but he's just murdered for 45 and now some no names going up and sometimes it was great and a lot of times it wasn't and then and then i remember there was a time when we keep seeing each other and finally had to follow him and and uh and held my own right. and then we started ripping it up and tagging each other's jokes and it was like <laughs> but i needed to get a little taste of that before i was almost ready for it that's fine um i got a question yeah like because i've, I've heard like <clears throat> uh comedians um say that yeah i was doing stand-up since i was 14 or 15 years old wow how did you how did how do kids get into the club to even get on the mic? Well, Chappelle in D.C., his mom uh, took him and then um, had to sit in the back. 
I guess that's how I don't I mean there's no kids farting around Hollywood doing that not that I know of mm. I see at the Ice House in Pasadena there's comedy classes for kids and I've seen some clips be posted for that but there's no there's no young phenoms like that rolling around uh, in in LA that I know of but Dave yeah his mom would have to take him and and, and be there with him I'm not trying to be like a a, a comedy industry plant sure but <laughs> like if if could would you be able to teach me how to do comedy one thousand percent really. Bro, like because, it, because my, my I could question, give you the, I could give you skills, things to think about. I mean, dude, there's I mean, it's not a bad move to take a class. Some, there's some people out there that do a, a decent job giving you some some uh, introductory things to think about. But what's a what's great about the art form is there's no replacement for the work. So it's like right. the reps. I right. mean, same thing with what you guys do, man. You can't just go, hey, man, can I want to sing at Carnegie Hall like in a year. <laughs> what's the game plan look like for that? You're like, well, first of all, you know, <laughs> right, put right. down that blunt and, you know, right, right. and uh, it's 10 a.m., you know. <laughs> uh, right. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's things I definitely do. Yeah. I mean, 1,000%. We'll, we'll figure that out yeah, for I, sure. Because, if anything, it You're would... super likable, you're charming, and even just watching with Wayne, I was like, oh, it's funny that you even say that. I was like, oh, yeah, you could you could give this guy uh, a, a few things to talk about up there. What's the best advice that well, was given to you by a comedian that you <clears> still carry on to this day? What That, that applies oh, to great question. Your, your work Man, even now. Uh this comedian named Brett Ernst, super funny. Maybe not the most well-known dude. Known, I think, in the comedy world for sure, but just a guy that's been doing it coming up on probably almost 30 years as well. And uh, just uh, so funny and so uh, kind of brilliant. And I uh, want to make sure he gets his props. But he told me we did a show in San Diego at the comedy store down there, and I was about three years in. And I was starting to fill my head up with concerns about not getting uh, Comedy Central Presents and not getting this. And three years in, but I was starting to kind of get into a groove where I was clicking and ticking and feeling mm -hmm. comfy on stage and, and kind of crushing a lot. But, you know, I wasn't, I didn't figure out who I was yet on stage. I think mm -hmm. it still does take about you know, eight to 10 years to really hone in on your point of view and, and why you're talking about what you're talking about. And, uh, but I felt like I was just ready for things that I wasn't getting. And he just was like, dude, control what you can control. He's like, hmm. be funny, uh, be nice, don't be a piece of shit. Like, uh, write all the time, get up all the time. That's what you can control. All those other things are gonna happen when they're supposed to happen. Hmm. You trying to chase them down isn't the way to do it. Don't right. you want people, and, you know, I still kind of am, am split on the whole, like, everything. Like, it'll all come to you when it's supposed to. I, I still think you got to be, you know, um, actively aggressive as far as, do you know what I'm saying? Like, me, um, like, when Wayne threw out to me, like, hey, come do the show with me one time, yeah. I followed up with him. It's not like I waited for him to, do you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, to hit me up and go, you're coming, right? Right, so, right, right, right. So, right. Um, so uh, but but that really resonated and still to this day and I always try to tell a young comic that were because it's so easy to get overly eager early on and everyone goes through it and and I still at 16 years in I'll have things where I'm like fuck I want to get this you know going I almost put out a, a special prematurely and now I'm gonna shoot one in September I, I put one up last week it's kind of like a, a pre-special to the bigger one I'm gonna do oh. but I almost did one before that that would have been like not the move. It, it was great, but it wasn't captured properly. Yeah, you know, and yeah, you still yeah, got to yeah, control yeah. all yeah. the quality elements. Sure, sure. Um, and so I was like, all right, I got to make sure that to stay to stay patient too. Um, mm. But controlling what you control is the biggest thing. And then, yeah, again, like he, when he was just like, don't be a piece of, don't gossip, don't do that, like things like that. Hearing it from somebody that I looked up to, I think was also a big a big move. I don't think right. a lot of comedians get that or are comfy enough to maybe ask somebody that. Um, yeah. You got to. You know, it's having rapport with people goes a long way to then feel comfy enough to be like, I don't want to overstep, but do you got, will you, you know, any advice or anything you want to, yeah, not yeah. just like, did you watch my set, but like, right. how about in the long run advice, you know? That's game. Cause, yeah. cause it's funny because, you know, doing what we've been doing for so long, it's like, I love it still very much. You can tell. And, and yeah, and, but, but it's like, even that sometimes get a little stale. Oh, yeah. So to, kick my own ass um i'm going to go out on my, my on my own and just, oh, you are coming yeah, up I, yeah solo tour yeah let's go I, I got a band and 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 we're just gonna play whatever the fuck we want and you know joe's doing that yeah he when he hit 50 he's like i'm gonna do a 50 city tour yeah bro i love that for you yeah just 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 because it, it it's almost like when actors go back to broadway mm. Like it, 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 it Going kicks, back to where you started. Yeah, it kicks you in the behind. Yeah. And, and it's not a big, 
you know, venue type of thing. It's going to be lounges and small clubs Let's and stuff go. like that. And it's going to be like a four piece band. And we're just going to create a sonic bubble that's going to just make people just go shit. I never knew I needed that. Yeah. And, and, and vice versa. Like this is for me more so it is for even the people that would be gracious you know, enough to, you know, give us support. Yeah. But this is part of, I guess what you're talking about to constantly stay sharp yeah and and to keep it fresh and so go out and do a few songs and 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 do a 60 minute set and fuck up and make mistakes oh yeah and 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 maybe try some of the stand-up that we're gonna prep you with exactly you know i'm popping through on a few shows to fuck around with it for sure yeah and 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 we are gonna have some shows in la so we're gonna you know play around and 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 have fun with this that's big time dude yeah wait now take me back again you said you and the guys met in performing arts school Mm -hmm. i didn't know that back in uh Back a long time ago. Damn. I'll just say that. Was that <laughs> you guys look good. Like don't crack. Uh do you guys do you guys uh is it like a, a I mean, do you all just you know, there's a comedian who um, passed away, but he had this great uh, joke about how other, he saw like a, a homeless acapella group, and he was like, how do they all meet, you know? He's <laughs> like, do they meet other homeless acapella enthusiasts? Where it was like, you know, like, can I get some change? Me too, me three, or right, whatever. Right, 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 But right. so I'm curious with guys like you, like how do you find each other in a, in a school that's probably got so many talented people? Well, we were all vocal majors, hmm. first off. Because, you know, in performing arts, you have majors that you pick up. You get, you know, creative writing, drama, instruments, mm. uh, dance, and vocals, music, choir, whatever you want to call it. And we were all vocal majors there. And what's funny is, is that uh, Nate, who's the, you know, the first guy that went to the high school, he came in in 85. I came in in 86. Wanye came in in 87. And Michael, at the time, came in in 85, too. Yeah. Um, I was next to last of getting in. Because Wanye got in before me, and he came into the school after me, because no one knew I existed. I was a geek, and I was very quiet. Mm. I was like one of those, I was you know, just skinny, frail guy yeah. that you know played Dungeons and Dragons with nice. all the degenerates. And, <laughs> you know what I mean? You still like, play? Yeah, I haven't played in a long time. Whoa! But I would love to. I know some dudes got some uh, leagues and some underground. Uh... I played the Marvel version though. Oh, cool. I played the Marvel version. Nice. I had a whole book, composition book, you know, the black and white book oh, in the yeah. front. And I had all my powerful guys and wow. I would name them and all this other shit. No, I was deep into geek them. <laughs> I still am actually. I'm, yeah. I'm a big comic book Good reader. I love comic books. And I played Wolverine shit. at Universal Studios for five years. How about that? Yeah, I don't know if you're starstruck right now or not. but I am. <laughs> Can I have your autograph? <laughs> probably, maybe the closest you'll get to the real Wolverine. Right, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. At least I hope not. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so... Um, we all met and we all got into the group at different points. Nate already had a previous group and those guys graduated. So he was looking to recruit some new guys. Real quick, are people when they're in this school, are you, is it almost kind of understood and assumed that like you're looking to form a group out of no. school? No. Okay. No, it was just, it was just honestly Trying something. to get the skills. Yeah, it was, it, it was, we were all, you know, uh, uh, lovers of music and loved to sing and we all probably came, all of us came from different backgrounds. And when I say, it was 75 people in that, that, that choir, and all of those motherfuckers could sing. They were amazing, all of them, every single one of them. Every one of them could have been discovered. Every one of them wow. could have had a record deal. They were all wow. amazing, like amazing. Like we would, and, and this, a, a call it a flex or not, but at that time, that choir could blow any other choir away. But like hands wow, down, dude. we would murk everybody. Where like, would you go? Yeah, <laughs> it was like it was it was crazy. You were blowing the roof off. Yeah, and you guys would do a full 75 performing somewhere. Yeah. That's incredible, like, dude. Nuts. Is there but, footage of this somewhere? No. I'm sure it yeah. is, but you know, they that was the, in the realm of yeah. VHS tapes. That's and, right. Pre media. Yeah. <laughs> you know, things that nature. Sure. Somebody, somebody would have to dig that out. Yeah. But um, but yeah, so we all met, you know, and, and again, Nate was recruiting certain people. He gotcha. recruited Wanye first. There was another member by the name of Mark Nelson that was in a group. Yep. And then I got in a group by by accident. Because for some 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 strange phenomenon my my music teacher at the time mr dumpson wow you never mr. forget donald dumpson dude um, what a music teacher name yes yes he was he was amazing. mr d mr d yeah and um he found out for some reason he i don't even know if he found i don't know what the fuck i don't know how to fuck but anyway he chose me to to sing a solo right which gave me all types of anxiety right he had me come in in lunchtime 
to sing this particular song. It was a, a gospel record called mm. Love Said Not So. And I sing it. I guess he was impressed. He's like, man, you sound pretty good. Okay, cool. So that was it. I thought that was it. Okay. Like, oh, you know, Weight lifted it. once you did your first yeah, solo? I was like, well, in front of him. Okay. So I was like, okay, cool, whatever. I don't know what he, what he did that for me for, right? So the whole choir is here. So he's playing some music. Then all of a sudden he says, Sean, come up on stage. When you say, my heart dropped out of my ass, <laughs> I was sitting there like, yo, what is he doing? Get the fuck right? out of here. So I'm walking up, about to shit myself. <laughs> You know what I mean? I stand up on stage, I sing the song, right? Now, there's a thing that happens, and I'm sure it happens with you, where when you're on stage, you don't see the crowd. Mm. You don't see anything. You just see blurbs and images sure. and and whatever. Yeah. You zone out. Yeah. I guess I fell out of that trance, and when I fell out and I looked around, everybody was like this. Oh, God. <laughs> like. I didn't even know this nerd could sing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This dweeb can sing. Well, like, so you know blown what I'm saying? away. Yeah. yeah. So I get off stage and Nate comes to me and say, "Hey, man, I'm forming this group. You want to be a part of this group?" The and I, and fuck I, and I, and, out and, of here. And I, Donald and, Dumpson. Yeah. Is the reason. Real talk. Because they didn't know. They thought I was just a nerd that hung around other nerds. Bro, and, and, that's fucking nuts. Yeah. And he just said, "You want to be a part of this group I'm putting together?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, fuck it." And that was it. Now let me ask you this. First of all, that's insane. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> did um did the confidence from doing that solo give you confidence to say yes to joining the group? Or were you already in a space where you were like, Yeah, singing in a group feels good because I got strength in numbers, I got backup. It was just like Do you know what I'm saying? Like I, Yeah. I think it was more so it wasn't even that. It was just like, sure. Sound, yeah. Sounds nice. Yeah. And 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 I'm down to do stuff. That's it. That's it. Like it, it wasn't because you're it, not thinking that it's gonna no, be the fucking none of us did. biggest like, you know, uh, we, group of all time. I, yeah, I just hung around guys that loved music like I did, and when we started harmonizing for the first time, it was almost like crack. We got to keep singing like th it felt. It was yeah. it it hit every sensor. Take me through that first in your day. body. Yeah, like we we sang like a new edition song, and we all just picked notes, and when we harmonized like no bullshit, we all just looked at each other and went. Oh shit! Holy yeah, shit! My that voice, Jan, good. with your voice, yeah. yeah, like it sounded. We were like, "Yo, this is that really how you sing?" Because that sounds good with how I sing. Real talk. Yeah. And we would just keep singing the same harmony like 10, 20, 50 times or whatever, and we'd be like, "Yo, this is nice." And and thus the group was formed. Wow, dude! Mm -hmm. New edition, man. I used to roller skate to that shit before you guys Word. parked on the scene. Exactly. Uh, wait, what? Um, okay, so so then once you get the the aha moment of like, all right, mm -hmm. this is the real deal. Mm -hmm. Is is there a, do you go home and kind of go, <clears throat> all right, like I need to make sure now that I'm, um, you know, that I take care of my business at school, like I take care of myself yeah. because this is now gonna be my life. Yeah, that's I'm, exactly what it was. Did Nate kind of say, since he put the group together, like, mm -hmm. hey, let's all look at each other. We're committing to this, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was literally, <laughs> Nate kind of, you know, we had like a manager at that time or whatever and, and we kind of found him through some mutual friends and and we kind of just did gigs around the city mostly funerals we sang at funerals oh god and, those must have been the most pop and funerals yeah, yeah. of all time holy <laughs> shit we sang at you funerals guys. and 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 people were wiping those tears away yeah, real quick we did talent shows around yeah. the city and you know at the time too there were a lot of other local groups that were doing their thing at the same time because everybody wanted to be new edition so they did right yeah, that was yeah. kind of the yeah 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 that was <clears> the thing so you you know you had a, like a lot of rival groups and we would all do the same talent shows and the same you know so it was it was a, a breeding ground at that point for uh singer groups at that time and uh we you know it just kind of started to bubble and and uh nate knew a gentleman by the name of charlie mack charlie mack was the security guard for will smith well he was the fresh prince at the time yeah and jazzy jeff and uh uh, uh, Charlie said, hey, man, I need y'all to meet Will, you know. So this goes into the story of how we got discovered. There was this radio show called The Powerhouse, uh, Power 99 back in, uh, you know, back then that was holding this. You know, you ever see those radio shows where it have, they invite a bunch of artists oh, yeah. and, you know, all that other stuff. Yeah, yeah. And this is around a time where Belle Bib DeVoe was announcing that they were going to be Belle Bib DeVoe. Wow. Right? So they were there, but we were there to meet Will. Um, Charlie didn't show up. So somehow, 
we got into the venue with no ticket. We got backstage without well with one pass. Some nice lady had to be an angel. I don't know who this lady is to this day. Mm. One of the guys asked her for her backstage pass, and we just alternated, right? And we all got in, right? We all got backstage, and just when the the last guy got into the uh, backstage area, Bell Bib DeVoe got off stage, about to walk off and go. We went to Ricky Bell first and asked, hey, can we sing for you? He asked for a demo tape. Do you have a demo tape? He's like, no, we don't have a demo tape. He's like, well, just have a demo tape and I'll, I'll listen to you. Biv, who we did not know, he just got a, a, a production deal with Motown three months prior mm. to find X, right? So we ran into him and said, Mike, can we sing for you? He said, can you sing now? He said, absolutely. So we gathered around and we are in the midst of Keep Sweat, Paula Abdul, <laughs> Kid and Play, all those people were there. What the fuck? And and we sang Can You Stand the Rain by New Edition. And he was impressed. He gave us his number. And a year later, we were signed to Motown. And, you know, there it is. God damn. That yeah. feels like quicker than normal, no? Yeah. And then after that, we met Will Smith. Yeah. Because he came walking in in a red leather jumpsuit. Cool and, shit. And, and, and a herringbone that said Fresh Prince and shit. And then we hung out with him all night at the house. How was that? So what a night. Dope. What, that was it, a night. You guys did an episode of Fresh mm -hmm. Prince, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was what was the story in, the, in that episode? I'm, uh, uh, his his uh, <clears throat> nephew was being christened. That's right. And uh, you know, we just happened to be the the, the special guest to yeah. sing at the christening. What was that taping like? It was dope. I mean, Philly. I mean, Will's from the from yeah. the, from the town. So, so guys, we were kind of familiar with. Okay. We knew each other. Yeah. You know, in, in in some respects. You know what I mean? So, People that are coming up from. Uh, the same place kind of all keep tabs on each other more yeah. or less philly's yeah. big but it's not that big yeah so when it comes to entertainers and and at that time we were all kind of doing our thing so we were running into each other from time to time and you know philly i mean will is from pretty much the same area i kind of grew up in you know mm. we lived in winfield and you know the, the hilltop as they used to call it in that area too so i grew up around that area too so what was that area like growing up um it was cool yeah it, it, it was um it was it wasn't the super duper hood hood, but it wasn't the suburbs. Let's gotcha. put it that way. Gotcha. Like, and, and, and where I came from originally was Southwest Philadelphia. I grew up in Southwest Philadelphia, and that was the hood. But it was a good hood. Like, a lot of people get a perception of the hood as being like run down and, and you know, raucous and all that other bullshit. When, Friday. When really, yeah, but it's it was really great growing up where I came from. Mm. Like, it, it was dope. It was, it was what you some of some of what you might see in a movie riding bikes big wheels girls in pigtails playing jump rope sure. hopscotch you know what i'm saying yeah, like yeah. it was it was the move it was dope was there a uh, a time or a, an event or a show that you guys got um you know asked to do that really kind of made you go fuck dude like we are like this group is now yes. you know it's been fun we have now hit this level yes. where yeah the very first time we performed at that same powerhouse that radio show Two years later, we were asked to perform there. It's eleven thousand people in the city that we grew up in. Wow! And when I say when we went on stage, you couldn't hear anything. The screams were so loud because the love was so crazy, and everybody was just excited to see us. Not to mention half the crowd was our friends and family. Yeah. <laughs> so so even more special. Oh, uh, it was crazy. I know we sounded like shit because it was like <laughs> you, you, couldn't couldn't hear anything. you couldn't hear anything. <laughs> And we were so excited that our adrenaline was probably up, so we were oh, probably man. up three or four. Yeah, how do you control notes. that? Yeah, like that was that was a moment that made us feel like okay, this might be something different than or or something that we never expected. Um, and then uh, in the in your family, is there was there one person or kind of everybody was just like, you know, once you told them what you were going to embark on, mm -hmm. like that's I'm sure you seem like you had a uh, solid foundation yeah. there, and yeah. and that's you got to have people that are not only supporting the dream, but but you know keeping you uh, on track. Like you know, my mom when I would call her and be like, man, it, these auditions are didn't get this or this show is oh my, and I'd call yeah. her from London when I was studying abroad acting uh, out there for um, in college at, at uh, in the acting program, and then I started to try to fart around with stand up out there, and it was just going so bad, and she just. She was there to pick up the phone, but also being like, well, fucking try again tomorrow. Yeah. Like, what, you know, what am I, what do you want me to tell you? Like, it's not easy. Looking back on how important my parents were, God bless them both, uh, was something that really shaped me. I would call my mom every day and she just call and check on me and, or rather, you know, make sure I'm good and all this other stuff. I remember calling her the first time we were at the AMAs. 
and that we won our award. And after that, I called her. And that was the first one, right? Yeah, crying. And she said, I'm so proud of you, son. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Man, those cool. moments were just. I just got goosebumps, dude. Yeah, that's those crazy. moments were just as important for her, probably more so sure. than it was for me. Because. She did her job. She did her job. And I pray, now that she's in the great beyond, that she was proud of me and that she felt like I did it because she did. She was amazing as, as a mother and my father even too, who kind of played the background mm. but still did the fatherly thing. Got to give him props because in auditioning for the high school where we all, re all met, you had to bring like three pieces of repertoire, music repertoire mm. that you give to the pianist and they would play it. The whole day, I looked and looked and looked, and I couldn't find the stuff that I wanted to sing to. So I went back home defeated, and I, I told my dad, like, yo, man, I'm, I don't think I'm going to go. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. I don't have the, I'm not prepared. And my, and my dad was like, look. And this, he gave me a jewel that I will always remember because this applies to so many things. He said, go. You never know what happens if you don't do it. He said, go, get your ass. He said, get your ass on the trolley and go to that school. You never know what's going to happen. If I did not make that choice. Damn. If I decided to just stay home. Yeah. I wouldn't be talking to you right now. <laughs> yeah. And Fuck, it, man. it's about choices. Life is about the subtleties. It's not always about the big things that we expect to happen to mm. us. It's the small choices of being in a certain room, just like how we met. Mm. We just met yeah. in a room. Yeah. We sat next to each other. Yeah. And By the way, we, we could have not sat next to each other. And like, we, you know we, what I'm saying? They could have, it would have been like, you could have been going up first and then had to get out of there. And then yeah. you just would have been side stage and that would have been that. I lived long <clears> enough <throat> to understand that you encounter human beings for a reason. Mm. Every single one. There is a purpose behind every choice that you make, behind every street you go down. Yeah, man. But all of that shit. Like, I, I can talk forever. Please. It's the, it's the same thing with just a, another just yeah. another example. I was in a flower shop because I was apologizing to my wife and I fucked up, so I was gonna buy some flowers. Good move, by the way. Right? Yeah, Fellas, yeah. are you listening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you gotta get That's the, the move. Yeah, so in a flower shop, so it happened to be Dave Grohl. Legend. He was getting flowers. <laughs> Oh, so let's go. We look at each other and say, what's up, dude? What's up? Was this flower shop called I Fucked Up, dot, yeah, dot, dot, I, Husband I, City? I think so. You can look it up, guys. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll give you the number at the end of this part. But, but he was like, yo, I like your shit. And I like your shit, too. And we exchanged numbers, and that was that. Fast forward maybe six, nine months, maybe. I don't know. This was after he fell off a 20-foot stage and broke his leg. Yeah. Still played. Uh, yeah, still played like a G. <laughs> yeah. Like a motherfucking no G. No shit, dude. But, uh, That's a true but, uh, rock star right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids, y'all can learn from No that. shit. But um, I pull up to the studio, and who do I see? Dave Grohl. Sitting, hammering out some chords. Because they was doing, um, God damn it, what's the name of the album? It was it was something in gold. Oh, um, fucking know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, look it up. Yeah, so yeah. we end up talking, and he was like, hey, man. Uh, Concrete he, and gold. Thank you. Yeah. So we end up talking. He was like, yeah, man. Uh, so I talk about his leg being broken. We kind of laugh about it. And he's yeah. like, hey, we're in the studio. Why don't you stop through? I said, no problem. He was like, I, I'm, let me handle my boys to men stuff because I was in there to handle some boys to men shit. Yeah. And I'll come right in. So I did that. Went to the studio. He's like, hey, I need. how would you like doing some background vocals for oh. the title track, Concrete awesome. and Gold? It's like, no problem. So if you play that record after we leave, you'll hear my background vocals. No way. Yeah. And it was just on some old, you know what I mean? Yeah, dude. Like, I've, I've had enough encounters with humans to understand that every person you meet is for some sort of purpose and, and reason. You got to figure out why. Now, do you do that because it's a cool, uh, a, a homey move to, like, help them out or also because it's cool for you to, it's like... Yeah, it's yeah, both. It's yeah. the school I come from. <clears throat> like, you know... There were times where, especially in the early stages, where we would just go by people's studio sessions just to hang out. And then it'd be sometimes like, yo, why don't you cop on this? Okay. 
Wow, really? It wasn't about ego. It wasn't about, yo, you got to paint. Like, it was a fraternity. And it was kind of like one of those things where it's like, yeah, let's sing. All right, yeah, fuck it. Yeah. Like who? Who would you guys bounce um, Baby Face. Wow, cool. And Jammin' Lewis. Wow. And, and, you know, uh, just just other artists that might have been in the <clears throat> studio at the time. and, and Obviously, know. with Mariah, with One Fine Day, I mean, you guys yeah. looked like you had a blast on that. Well, that one was by request. She, oh, gotcha. she called us. Oh, no way. And said, hey, I'm writing a song. I want you guys to write one write it with me i mean you guys were both like doing that right so that, yeah. that made sense yeah it was cool so we we flew out and we were on tour at the time and we we flew out in new york at hit factory and she was there and we wrote one sweet day in an hour one sweet day that's right yeah they wrote that in an hour because we no way to, yeah and one hour <laughs> just knocked it out and then said okay cool so we went back out on the road and then we came back on another day off and recorded it is where you see in the music video yeah So, and then we recorded it and then went back out on tour again and there you go. Bro, when push comes to shove, can you, can any good artist like sit down and do that? Or was it, did you only have an hour or did you guys sit down and go, we've got five hours and then you, it, you, you get it in an hour. So you go, all right, let's We not... might've had a few more hours than an hour. For sure. But we knocked it out like God lyrically. damn, dude. And then it was like, all right, cool. That sounds good. Now let's figure out when we can rec re record it because we did have to go. So you figure out the melody in that hour too, yeah? Uh-huh. Wow. Is that like you guys going back and forth just like, mm. she's doing her thing, yeah, yeah, we're yeah, doing yeah, our yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, Mariah had a had a, had a a blueprint and her producer, Walter A, kind of had some music and we were like, okay, cool. I know Walter. We, yeah, yeah, Walter Afanasiev. Yes, he's and, been on the podcast. His yeah. uh, wife, Katie Cazorla, is a comedian as well. I oh, mean, She's funky. coming on here tomorrow, yeah. Funky, Walter's funky. been to probably, I don't know, 40 of my shows in the last two months. I love Walter. Guy's a G. Yeah, he's crazy. Right? He's real That's dope. crazy. So yeah, so we, we're banging it out, and it's like, all right, cool, and, and that was it. And that's that's the creative process. We don't, we don't like to, with creatives, and I'm sure you could probably, I know you can attest to this too, sometimes we can think too much. Yeah. And a lot of times, it's better to just kind of have 30 minutes. 1,000. Because you don't think. Man, yeah. You know what I mean? You don't, yeah. you, you don't really think about what it is you're going to do. You're not self-conscious about how your approach is, your delivery. It's more organic. It's human. Totally. So you just say, fuck it. And, and you just go out and you do whatever feels the most natural. Oh Yeah, for sure. And sometimes when you have a little bit of a time uh, constraint, you're like, all right, I got to... If I got too much time, sometimes my mind will wander, yeah. and and then some, I think that's there's a blessing and a curse to that because sometimes it's nice to maybe take you know t you know be dialed in for twenty minutes straight and then mm -hmm. chill for twenty yeah. and then come back to it. Maybe sometimes you need that, but yeah. Yeah. but um, it is such a crazy creative balance for any artist to try to find of like. You know, even with there's certain stories that I have on stage, I'm trying to you know uh, fine tune before the special where I'm like I think that's done, but then in the last couple of weeks, like I'll end up adding shit and I'm yeah. like. Oh, man, maybe there's another like turn on this, yeah. And that's always fun. And I think if you can keep peeling the, the banana and and um and and finding more layers to something, and you know, in comedy, you're supposed to always ask questions. That's mm. that's not that'd be something I would throw at you early on too. Is like if this is true, then what else? You know, so if right. I think this, then what else? So right. that you're like, you know, if I'm. You know, I got a story about my, my bachelor party and this, my buddy, you know, he wanted us to get a stripper and I was like, I don't think we need that. And then he threw me this emotional curveball. He was like, come on. I was like, I didn't look at it from that <laughs> angle. Let's do it. Come on, right, it's a great point. Right, right, you know, right. and this is when I talk about how we got this, you know, girl comes through, I go, I don't want to say she wasn't Phoenix's finest, but she had more nipples and teeth, you know? And then there was a whole thing nice. about the whole show that she gave and something that happened. And then my wife asked me what happened after and, and, um, and it ends up being this longer thing, but there's a couple of things I added that that happened that I just didn't have have in the original bit that I told to a friend and he was like that's funny you got to put that in yeah. so then that opened up another thing and then it just kind of segued naturally into some stuff uh, with my wife and I and just about peer pressure friends and whatever and yeah. that I hadn't really ever talked about and I riffed all this on stage and so now I'm like oh, man like I still got you know a month and change to to uh, continue to explore but 
you know, and and it's it sometimes is uh, you know, fills you with anxiety because I'm like, oh man, like I got a month and a half to like, you know, add on to that. But it's also exciting. It now makes going on stage right now even more fun because I'm like, I got something to play with. Do your jokes change in real time? <clears throat> Or kind of take a turn. Oh, always. I don't think I've based e- off of- ever said anything the same way. Oh, okay. Because, yeah. yeah. because like saying you're on stage and you're and you're telling the joke, and the atmosphere kind of makes you go. Oh yeah. A different direction or oh, yeah. a person. Oh yeah. In the crowd or, or you know that you might throw in or add in because I've seen that with with comedians and that's that's the. Oh Sean, the, my yeah, bro. You know, when you come see me do an hour, it's. Even in a 20 minute set, it's that way. I, I have a map, you know, uh, more or less. I got stuff in chunks, you know, I got some travel stuff up top and then into getting married. And then, you know, my uh, got a lot of stuff on my eight year old nephew who's a psycho right now and my twin nieces. <laughs> <clears throat> and then stuff about um, my mom and then being raised by a single mom. And then the bachelor party goes into some other stuff with my friends who have kids that shouldn't be uh, dads. And then, um, and then just some drinking weed stories. You know, I got a buddy where I go, he's got a face of a dad whose kid's probably call him by his first name. Right, you know, right. To where he's like, all right, boy, it's time for bed. And they're like, fuck you, Dustin. And he's like, all right, I'll be in the garage working on my trains. Call me dad on my birthday, maybe. Right. And, um, and so, but I always try to stay so present in the hour, yeah. especially to where I'll go up there and go, all right, I'm going to come out hot with, with this chunk. Yeah. But then I'll start talking to the crowd because I like to... Just it helps me connect the room too. Yeah, it's almost like right. I can't just stand up there and talk to the crowd. I got to feel like we're all hanging out. Right. And it's a conversation. Right. And we're all like, we could have done this at your in your backyard more or less. Sure. And um and I've just gotten comfy to a point to where I really can uh can do that. And even you know when uh, that show with Wayne, I was gonna do that even more. But I was my first time jamming with him, and he was like, dude, he's like, anything you would have done, I would have followed you. And I was like, truly, yeah, you're the master. Right. But I was still trying to just. Get my feet wet <laughs> right. next to a guy that I've looked up to for so long. Yeah. Um. And so, uh, so in the hour, I like to I'll, I'll bob and weave, dude. It's like Patrice O'Neill was the first comic I saw that that truly did that brilliantly, where he would do material, Patrice talk to crazy. the unreal, and then talk to the crowd, and then plant three or four things, and then weave them all together. And That's I do that sick. now, and it's and it's fun. And there'll be bits that I'm not planning on doing, and I'll be talking to somebody about something, and then and then um. They'll say something and it'll trigger. We went uh, kayaking in, uh, in La Jolla, in, where the comedy store was two weekends ago, yeah. and we, we were uh, taken around by these two tour guides that were these young, you know, new college kids. That I go, they didn't necessarily smoke weed themselves, but their parents definitely blew it in their face when they were kids. <laughs> I go, these kids were like, you know, so my name's Maranzio, and he's a fucking Maranzio. white guy, you know, and then there's a guy named <laughs> oh Noah, my God. and these guys, every they had all these. You know, interesting facts followed by doomsday scenarios where they'd be like, you know, down here is where the original La Jolla turtle was started, the one with the most strongest and impenetrable shells. Uh, Noah, you said you saw a turtle last week, right? Yeah, it was sick. Yeah, it was sick. It wasn't sick bad. It was sick good, you know, but actually the turtle was sick, which was bad sick. Anyway, these houses at some point are all going to slide off the cliff and crumble into the ocean. Follow me into this cave. And so I like riffed this whole story about the experience that day, but only based on this um, uh, bachelorette party. And I asked her, you know, what is your what did your uh, man do that really <laughs> made you go? Oh, this guy's uh, the guy. I a guy should stick around for. She mm. goes, oh, he took me to the to the beach. I go, oh, so just just uh, to something free that was accessible that everybody can do. I go, at least he took you outside. And then I go, what did you guys do? And she goes, oh, we just like, we w- waited in the water. And I like, all right, fuck. I go, all right. And then, and then I asked her if she'd ever been kayaking. And then that led to that story that I hadn't planned on doing. Right. But I've been thinking about it that day being like, here are some beats of this experience that I'll probably yes. next week at the comedy store yes. work out. Cause that's the gym in, in town, right? right? But the crowd was so hot sold out yeah. and I was, you know, grooving. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to, you know, you, I got to this point where it's like, you hope uh, that when you feel yourself going, oh, I, I'm scared to do that. You know, fucking, well, that should be a reason to do it. Right, right, and so, right, um, right. And you just right. grow from that. Even if it did bomb, I know I'm going to get out of it. I got fucking 40 more minutes to go. That's, That's early right. in the show. That's right. And so uh, I ended up just kind of riffing that story and it got an applause break. And it was like, because I knew what I wanted to say. I stayed in the pocket, which is a term you know I like to use as far as that Brett Ernst also said, because he's like, man, you'll find yourself. That's one thing, you, again, you can control is like, when you're starting to do a new bit, if it's not getting the response you thought it would, yeah. and then you bail. You can always bail. Yeah, like and what happens in that in that moment? You bail or trail off or whatever. 
I mean, you know, I remember the first time I did a, an all uh, black room with Sinbad, hosted for Sinbad, who, <laughs> who was one of the first stand ups I saw. My dad showed me. So it was a real for treat. For the record, blacks can be pretty tough in a comedy place. Oh, oh bro. But also, the <laughs> best compliments. <laughs> yeah, and the greatest Sean, compliments. let me tell yeah, you, yeah, yeah. there was white people there too, but a predominantly uh, black crowd. And the first time I really uh, performed for that. And they were, they, they're, I, I don't want to say harsh critics, but if you get them, man, they give it up. Oh, yeah. Right? And, and we're uh, animated when we laugh. Bro, I had never we seen do backflips, some of the chairs in the air. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we're I've never drop seen... kicking each other. <laughs> Dude, it's the shit. It, I mean, the confidence was boosted. Yeah. And I get off stage, and and it was so funny. Literally, like back to back, there was a, an older white couple, and they were like, "Wonderful program. We enjoyed the show. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing what you do." And then literally a six five black dude with a huge suit, and he goes, "My man, he right, goes, right. I see you. I see you. You doing your thing. You doing your thing, Playboy. Yeah, that's, that's that's what's that's up. That's the ultimate compliment. That's what's up." And he kept saying, "That's what's up." He gave me a big meaty high five. Yeah. And then his wife's right behind him, right. And uh, she had like six bags, and she was just like, oh, she goes, ooh, look at you. She goes, oh, I like you. Oh, I like you. She said, I'm going to take you home, shrink you up into a little See? thing, put you in my purse, and take you out. You make me laugh whenever I want, whenever I'm having a down day. <laughs> Teresa, how funny is this motherfucker? Oh, Teresa was there. Teresa was there. Adam, you they, you were you impressed them. <laughs> yeah. You impressed them. All right, I got a question. They made me feel so much better Yeah, let me tell about you, black folks will be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll be honest. They'll, they'll laugh with you or they will dog the shit out of you <laughs> yeah, to the yeah. point where you'll never want to do it again. <laughs> Tired of going to the grocery store? Are you just so bamboozled by how many foods and products there are and you want to eat? You need to eat. It helps to keep you sustained and alive, but you don't know what to make. Well, have no fear. HelloFresh is coming in hot to save the day. Guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. And I'm here to tell you about HelloFresh. You know who they are. They're the number one uh, America meal kit out there because they've been jamming and rocking and rolling and fill up, filling up your tummies and hearts for years. And, you know, they're the uh, the go-to spot for pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes. Uh, and Look, I can't even talk because I'm getting my mouth watering just thinking about all the fun recipes HelloFresh has. They send it right to your doorstep so you don't have to go to the grocery store. How many times you go to the grocery store, you see some weirdo, some psycho, some serial killer getting paper towels, Tums, and Diet Pepsi. It's like 10 p.m. at night. You're like, dude, what are you doing here by yourself? Save that uh, worry uh, from your life and get HelloFresh because they're sending all that stuff to your door. They make it fun, they make it easy, and it's affordable. Uh, my wife and I have been screwing around with uh, HelloFresh for quite some time, and they just make it easy to uh, to eat, you know, and that's what you want. Fall's just around the corner, and HelloFresh is here to help you plan for a busy holiday season uh, with tasty, tasty dishes <laughs> sent right to your door. Tasty dishes? I can't talk because I'm thinking about all their damn food. Now, look, if you want wholesome made meals and there's not enough time, HelloFresh We'll do that for you. All you need is 15 minutes to enjoy a tasty, satisfying meal made in your own kitchen. Just look for their quick and easy dinner options, plus quick breakfasts and lunches as well. Uh, look, it seems like your family's hungry all the time. Well, great. They got snacks, sides, and more. Uh, every HelloFresh order uh, allows you to pick and curate your own little plan. They've got a HelloFresh market. You can take your pick from a curated selection of over 100 add-on items. Parents are going back to school shopping crazy. Let HelloFresh get the groceries for you and save on money and time. Send that stuff right to your door. Life gets busy. HelloFresh is 25% cheaper than takeout. And you don't have to go to the grocery store and make weird eye contact with somebody from your past that you don't know their last name or favorite color of. Right now, if you want to be a part of this amazing meal plan, go to HelloFresh.com slash 50about and use promo code 50about for 50% off plus free shipping. That's insane. You got to do it. It's the best out there. HelloFresh.com slash 50about with the promo code 50about to get 50% off your order plus free shipping. You can't get much better than that. HelloFresh is the name of the game. It's how everyone's eating. It's how you're feeling better and living life properly. So do it right now. The meals are great. The snacks are great. It's healthy. And look, you can even lose weight if you're trying to uh, make sure that your portions are uh, appropriate, which HelloFresh is the best in the biz at. So go to HelloFresh.com slash 50about, promo code 50about, get 50% off your order, and start feeling better. Let's get back to the episode. Who are your comedic Avengers? Oh, man, good Name question. Name six... Oof. Are there Who, six Avengers? Yeah. Yes. Okay. N name your comedic you Avengers. Got it. Then, I want, then I want your music uh, Avengers. Yes. Give me the intro. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, go. Dude, I'm, I mean, I'm starting, <laughs> I'm starting with, uh, oh, man. Because Sinbad was so influential on me when I first started, and that mm -hmm. weekend, watching him... Uh, do like again what I now feel like I'm implementing in my show, which mm -hmm. is the the blend of 
of crowd uh, interaction and material. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw Sinbad do two hours uh, every show and then some, and and was so quick and so present and so funny, man, and so mm. likable. And no, I just Sinbad is he really and, dude? And, and I feel like I guy. I mean, and you know he's he's you know dealing with some shit right now, but yeah, like yeah. man, that guy. He gets his due credit. I don't want to say he was a little punchline there for a oh, minute. Oh, he absolutely did. No, but but I mean, even in movies like House Guests, I mean, the guy mm-hmm. is a fucking G. And he told me we'd sit there at the club every night till about two, three in the morning, mm. and he would just tell me stories. And he's another guy that's just like been around to where he's plugged into where we'd be watching the playoffs, NBA playoffs, and D Wade be on there, and he'd tell me some D Wade stories about when he went to E3 with D Wade and did all this, and then he'd tell me these stories about you know doing a show for, in Cuba with Martin Lawrence, and, yeah. and Martin Lawrence was ripping on the ambassador of Cuba's wife, who was a pretty big gal, didn't know it was her, was doing all these fat jokes. They put out a hit on Martin so they had to sneak him out back on oh, a shit. boat because they were trying to kill him. Whoa. Crazy shit. Anyway, guy's a legend, uh, inspiring just from being the first stand-up I feel like I saw. He's got to be up there. Eddie okay. Murphy. Eddie Murphy Delirious is the first stand-up I saw where I was like, sure. oh, I got to. Sure. I don't know how I do sure. that, but I want to do that. He changed the game with that. 1,000%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got to throw Chappelle on there because he, yeah. uh, it, it, once I started to do open mics, he just was a guy who was like, I mean, again, storytelling, storytelling, silly. Yeah. <clears throat> His... Um, his, uh, you know, I always am kind of a, I, you know, the crowd work is where I kind of take my time and allow yeah. myself to slow down a bit. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm usually kind of firing away pretty quick, and mm-hmm. so I always admire Dave and his his cadence and his patience mm-hmm. and just the the way he milks a moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I just think he's a mind that there's a handful of people over time comedically. Prior, Carlin, obviously, um, you, there's a, a, a decent list, but Dave is definitely a guy where it's like, man, he is so uh, imperative to the world of comedy. Yeah, in, in other ways that a lot of comics um, just haven't, just their minds just don't work that way. Yeah. and Dave just is like, you look to him as far as being like a, you know, make us laugh during this tragic time. You almost, you know, what I'm saying like yes. he just, you need him to to be full Dave. Dig it in uh, in dark times. Yeah, Bill Burr is my favorite comic he's right now. So has been just did shows with so, him last night dope. and watched him do his new hour already. Really, Sean, it's mind boggling, dude. Love Bill. It makes me go, I am shit when I watch him. I'm like, wow. but also you hope to get to a point, and I'm sure you guys had this too, where you go. All right, cool. I can respect that without making it feel bad about myself because he mm. does his thing, I do my thing. Yeah. We're 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 thinking about different stuff. Right. But he's, you know, thirty plus years and he is no, good, Bill's, dude. He's real funny. dialed in. That's I mean, you gotta uh we'll get you to a show when he's on, on one, one of my too, favorite man. uh bits was when he was on Saturday Night Live. Oh my god, yeah. The opening <laughs> monologue, right? Yeah, oh my yeah. god, it's so dope. But anyway, Unreal. Go, I'm sorry, go uh, ahead, wait, go so ahead, that's go that's four. So Simbad Eddie, Dave, uh Bill. Bill. Man, two more. There's a comedian named Greg Gerardo that I was uh, referencing earlier with the um, uh, homeless acapella group, and okay. he uh, he passed away at 44 about maybe 10 years ago. Mm. Um, just struggled with with staying clean, but was wow. was a Harvard lawyer and then got into stand up. And you'll ask any comic, especially from New York, he was the ro- during the roast, the heyday of the Comedy Central roast. Mm-hmm. He was like the guy. I want to say I, I know you. You definitely do. If you yeah. saw his picture, you know mm-hmm. who he was. Mm-hmm. And but it, he got this, uh, you know, um, notoriety from that. But he was a brilliant comic, dude. Mm-hmm. And um, and I, uh, yeah, just just loved him. I mean, he, uh, what he goes. Uh, he did this one joke about I think I don't know if it was a Lil John lyric. He goes, Lil John has this lyric where he goes, uh, "No more uh, dick to your pussy, just dick to your throat." I ain't gonna pay no child support. And he goes, "No, I'm not gonna say that's a bad uh, message to send to the kids. I just don't want them to start to grow up learning that uh, throat and support rhyme." <laughs> Hey, Little John's got a song on his last album where he goes, "No more dick for your pussy, just dick to your throat. You ain't gonna get no child support." <laughs> Not that that's a bad approach to life, necessarily. (laughs) But I don't want kids growing up hearing that message. I don't want kids thinking that throat and support rhyme. (laughs) It's not right. Throat, support. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, That's the genius of Little John. Bro, yeah, exactly. Uh, (laughs) He just, uh, he was on another level. And then, man, I got to, Man, I gotta throw Carlin in there, dude. I mean, I just got Man. on this Carlin kick in the past couple years, yeah. And I feel almost bad that it took me that long to to get on it, but like, yeah. Man, dude, changed the game. Yeah, he did. He did. He pissed a lot of people off too. One thousand percent. Yeah. 
and just like I don't know, again, like it's it's fun to to watch certain minds uh, work and and the evolution of his comedy and how he like you got to evolve, man, and you got to yeah. stay like you don't have to change who you are and what you do, but like, but he. I mean, I guess he kind of did. He, 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 he just he didn't do it for anyone else other than him. He just was like, "This is sure. who I am now. Yeah. So this is what what I'm going to talk about." Yeah. And he was just like, you know. And, and I guess getting back to what we were saying too, where you don't want to like, you know, people will come to you if the, the cream does rise to the top, and if yeah. you are undeniable, then you'll get yours. But yeah, I mean, there was no way he wasn't going to be as prolific as he was because um, he just, you know. Yeah. I, people I, recognized it. I enjoy, I think, older comedians. You're right. Because yeah. older comedians is like sitting with your like favorite uncle. Yeah. And they're just telling you stories. Yeah. And and I love stories. I love history. Like my father was great. And I think that's why I was not a history buff, but I love history mm. because of how he interpreted it. Yeah. He didn't say, well, 19, yeah, 1965, these motherfuckers did this shit. <laughs> and let me tell you something, son, this is what happened. And I'm sitting there like, this is what happened. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Oh, so, yeah, oh, yeah. so a lot of times comedians, like you mentioned, Carlin, Mooney. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, Chappelle. Uh, uh, um, you named a couple. I'm trying to. But but those guys, I, I magnate to because they teach me things. Mm. And there's a lot of truth in comedy, and and especially now in 2023, comedians have become our new news reporters. Oh yeah, because you guys cut to the shit. Like you don't have any political agenda or no advertising dollars that you're afraid of losing or anything like that. You guys just say, yeah, man. Honestly, what we've all been thinking, John Stewart, like you know those oh, guys yeah. that that really just say and speak for the people. Oh yeah, which is why. Um, those people like yourself and all those others are so revered because it's it's real. Y'all shoot from the hip. Like mm. it's not about, you know, trying to please a certain group of folks. And and that's what I love about that type of comedy because I learn something. I, I walk out not just with a sore belly from laughing, yeah. but it makes me go and research some shit. Yeah. Because you might have brought up something or said something that made me go, damn. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, that type of thing. So Yeah, you got to be entertained when you're at a comedy show, first and foremost. But if you can walk away with some things, for sure, that... I love that. ...that uh, to think about, you know, that's never a bad thing. When you met... I heard you say in some interview about um, singing for the first time at a barbershop did you, and, like, <clears throat> and them, like, really busting your balls. Did yeah. you go... Were you... Was that, like, a thing you did a lot? That no. you went to the barbershop or no? I was shy. Okay. Like, I sang for me. Not necessarily for other people. Yeah. I just love to do it. Yeah. So when it got wind that, you know, caught wind that I could sing, you know, my local barbershop, Mr. Charles, mm. when I would go get my hair cut, uh, he was like, hey, 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 Sean, before we get this hair cut, I ain't going to sing for everybody at the barbershop. And I'm sitting there like, my man, <laughs> I just want to get a haircut. Yeah, get the yeah, fuck yeah. out of here, man. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, I'm like, what I'm like seven, eight years old. And you had good pipes at that age, yeah. It was cool. Yeah, you know, I, I was still soft with it, but you know, I had a decent voice for a kid too, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, yeah. You stood out. But then what made it more appealing is I'll give you five dollars. That's Kit Kat money, baby. You what? <laughs> five dollars? Oh yeah. For a seven-year-old kid, you know how much fucking oh, candy yeah, I, I could have gotten from that <laughs> yeah, shit? Yeah, dude. Potato chips. Oh, everything. Uh, Ten-cent cookies oh, and yeah, the whole dude. thing, man. I man, I hit the mother load. I was right there, still nervous. I would sing, and a lot of times when I was singing, I was young, I would kind of do this with my fingers. So I'm trying to sing like <laughs> Lady of My Life. There'll be oh, no so Michael. darkness tonight. Lady, our love will shine. You know, and, <laughs> oh, and they'd be like, oh my God, that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. the whole thing. And they would give me money, and then the other bar would give me money. I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? So I, it, I, 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 I was honestly forced out of my shyness. Yeah. Like people forced me out yeah, of it yeah, from yeah. Mr. Dumpson to the barber around the way to my mom to yeah. all these people. They was like, "No, you're doing this," and I'm like, "I don't want it, but do it." Yeah. So yeah, like that. And you grew in those moments without knowing it. Yeah, we did. Wait, did you guys ever get to jam with Mike? Yeah. 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 We um. Nerve wracking. Uh. You guys didn't do a track with him, did you? Yeah. We did. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Like we did a lot of shit. God damn. And we we did a um background vocals for this song called History. 
Oh yeah. That we did for him. But even before that, there was a, uh, a, a thing where we were honoring him. It was, it was VH1 honors. Remember those, those shows? Oh yeah. Back oh then? yeah. And, uh, we sang, uh, heal the world with him. Wow. Like, you know, we go on stage and we start singing. There are ways to get there. If you care enough for the living, make a little space. Make a better place. Heal the world. Make it a better place. For you and for me and the entire human race. And Michael in his Michael Jackson fashion pops up in the middle. So the stage cool, and then we start singing i have a picture of that in my house good for you to this day and you got a good memorabilia wall don't you oh man good for you it's crazy come and, on and, man and and michael actually became a good friend wow and uh gave us a lot of a lot of sound advice that we use to this day just like how you talk about sinbad sure he, he sat and he would tell you stories yeah and stuff like that mike would do that michael would do that with us what anything you can share that maybe he threw at yeah, you yeah, that, yeah yeah um something that honestly kind of correlates with what just happened a few days ago um billboard magazine released uh an article about um the top 100 artists that were nominated for the Grammys and how many they won or how many they didn't win. Make a long story short, it was basically artists that they uh, highlighted that had a lot of uh, number one chart history, mm. like Old Town Road by Lil Nas X, 19 weeks at number one. Yeah. Uh, Ed Sheeran, 12 weeks at number one. Mm. Mariah, 14 weeks at number one, and so on and so forth. The Beatles, nine weeks, you know, back in the day. Yeah. So, so, so on and so forth. And I read this article, and I'm scrolling at the pictures, then it stopped. I said, well, where are we? <laughs> oh, man. Right? I could show you this on Instagram right now. So I wrote under that picture to Billboard. And I said, hi. Good for you. Billboard. I was just wondering. <laughs> I was like, where is my group? I said, not only did we do it for the first time, yes, we broke the record the 36 year old record that was held by Elvis. Don't be cruel hound dog. I got that down here, I was gonna bring that okay. up. Okay, yeah. we broke that record first by exceeding his 11 weeks to 13 with End of the Road, right? A Couple years later, Whitney Houston did it with I Always Love You, right? She broke ours with 14 weeks. We tied her mm -hmm. for 14 weeks with I'll Make Love to You. Yep. So we did it twice. Get the fuck then out of here. Then we did it again with Mariah Carey at 16 weeks with One Sweet Day. <laughs> so we're the, only, we're the only artists in history to do that three times. So I, t I tapped to them and say, well, where are we? And we won four Grammys. I was just, yeah. So I'm like, so where are we? What's crazy is that caught fire. Like I started seeing it. Justin Timberlake mentioned it. He was like, "Yeah, where Let's are they?" Let's go, dude. Like, you know, <laughs> Let's go. You know, Ava DuVernay and Reginald Hudlin and all these artists and athletes were under it. Like, yeah, where are they? Good for you, man. Right. So, to you make a long story short, some young dumb writer that just wasn't. So check this out. So, Billboard did it yesterday. They just posted an article on us, right? That because of the the backlash, they posted it and they still got it fucked up. Get out because of here. they mentioned I'll Make Love to You and One Sweet Day, but did not mention End of the Road, which broke the 36 year old record. How do you not. That set it off for you. Meant, it, it set it off for a lot of people. It wasn't just us. Like, we were the first to, to do that, and they did not mention it. What the fuck, dude? So, do you feel still like unsatisfied or no? Just the fact that they came yeah, out and got. Yeah, I, I, I do. Because. Um, we are not glory hounds at all, but I know how much or how hard me and my guys worked and what we've done to keep this name alive, oh, yeah. even when the industry wanted to throw us away. 
and say, oh, you guys are done. Oh, it's a long story. That's a, wow. this, you got to bring me back. Yeah, please. Oh, you got to open because, door. Because that's another story All right. that I can spend two hours on. God damn. But um, so, and not normally, and they've, they in Billboard too, and certain other entities that sure. I won't name have done certain things that almost felt like they were trying to X us out. Wow. But I never said anything. Yeah. It was one of those things where it's like I watched it and I saw it and I was like, huh, mm. that's interesting. Mm. And then I just kept it moving because I'm like, hey, fuck it. You know what I mean? Like, yep. whatever. Yep. But that pissed me off in a sense where I was like, come on, y'all. Like, it's don't, too obvious don't to do that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was way too obvious. At, at, at that point, it almost feels like an active choice to like leave you out because it's like three times. Like if it. We did it three times. Yeah. No one's done it three times. Yeah, man. Nobody. Not Michael Jackson, not the Beatles, not Elvis Presley, not Madonna, yeah, not man. Mariah. Boys to Men yeah, holds that distinction. Bro, so the point is, is insane. that how do you forget us? And just like you said, you said it, I didn't. But it's almost like someone is purposely trying to just write us off of, out of history. Yeah. And it's very interesting because there's a few incidences where I felt that way. And I kept it to myself because I didn't want to sound like a crazy person yeah. or a conspiracy theorist or, oh, you just tripping or you sound like the old bitter guy and yeah. all this other stuff. It wasn't like that at all. But when these incidences continue to happen and you're not being brought up in conversations that, you know, you basically earned your spot to be brought up. Yeah. It's like, come on. What are we doing here? Yeah, man. Again, it was another. That's another podcast. Yeah, we'll come I, back for that. I can, I can go. Yeah, on Yeah, I can't wait to dive deep. <laughs> um, before we wrap this up, I do got to ask you. I was uh, alone uh, in, um, I think Miami at the Super Bowl. Uh, Mark Sanchez, former NFL player, and I were doing yeah. a podcast. We were interviewing Miles, Miles Teller down there before Top Gun was going to come out. Mm -hmm. And I go to a bar by myself uh, the night that um, they were honoring Kobe uh, at mm. um, at uh, now Crypto Arena. And you guys sang the anthem. Yes. And I sobbed at a sports bar watching that. And A, I mean, you know, and, um, you know, this has been uh, like an incredible treat to not only get to know you, uh, Sean, but like to have you on the pod. Like, I mean, your voice to me is such an integral part of my life. Not, I don't even want to say childhood because it's like as soon as I was a fan, State a fan, do you know what I'm saying? Thank like you. seeing the, uh, how many live shows I've seen. My buddy Chris DeLeon and I, it, when we were, he um, is, you know, probably my most talented mu music friend from back in the day in Seattle. I mean, taught himself piano, cello, violin, guitar. Sick. You know, did lessons, was a music teacher at school in Seattle for underprivileged kids for a while. Oh, that's great. Uh, and still does it on the side. And he and I, he would come in and we would, uh, when I would finish band, I played clarinet. And he would uh, come in at the end of band and he had an orchestra right after and he would play piano and we would serenade a couple girls, the <laughs> boys, the men songs. There you go. And he's a little Filipino guy that and I'm, uh, you know, this white Jew from North Seattle. And we would just try to harmonize as best as possible. And uh, and we, you know, I mean, we got a couple of days out of it. There you and go. Um, but uh, got some equity. Yeah. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but that was so like, you know, watch it. You guys were so uh, it was such a heavy moment, but so beautiful, but so um you know, it was almost like when you see something, you go, oh, this, these are the perfect guys to be doing this right now because of your voices, the harmonies. The, it was such a um, – everyone was kind of putting a lot on that that moment and that game and that just uh, situation because there are so many emotions, dude. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I I guess if, if you can speak at all to that experience, like what it was like for you, um, I'm sure you guys got to know Kobe, I'm sure, a little bit too. And, yeah. like, just – it seemed – I mean, again, I'm sobbing. There's some dudes next to me sobbing in a, at a sports bar miles away, so I can't imagine what it was like there, but um, you just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, Phil, you know, Cobes from the town, too. Yeah. From the Lower Marion, but still, it's Philly. And uh, just seeing him come up from high school, meeting him before he got signed, and being friends with him. Um, Kobe was the type where... We wouldn't see him a lot, but when we when we did see him, it'd be almost like a head nod. Like, what up, man? What's up? We dap each other. Mm -hmm. You good? Yeah, you good. Okay. All right, man. Good to see you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and that's the type of relationship we had and, and it was very sad, um, to hear of his passing. Uh we were actually coming in to be at the Grammys because we were supposed to sing 
for Tyler the Creator, mm. or with Tyler the Creator on the Grammys. And I remember distinctly looking up at the clouds, like, man, these clouds are really dark and thick. Like, this is crazy. I'm surprised we even came in. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, because, you know, and that was the day that yeah. the cloud cover and yeah. the helicopter, you know. Yeah. And uh, singing at that particular um, honoring, I almost cried because I never heard the Crypto Center that quiet. And it was almost eerie quiet. Yeah. To the point where I was like, oh, my God, like I'm getting emotional. Yeah. You know, and, and you felt the love that the city had for this guy. And uh, it was an honor to do it. And it was an honor that they asked us to do it because they could have asked anybody. So for the Laker organization to allow us to help cement that moment, again, just another one of those incredible moments in our lives that we'll always remember and be honored that we were a part of. Do you, um, do you remember, is it a, do you black out type thing? Are you looking at like the way you said, looking, you, you don't really see faces and people. Are you just like, yeah, in that case, it's almost like it's surreal because there's a lot of thoughts that's going in your head. You can't believe that he's gone. Yeah. And then cause you're singing the anthem. You're like, this is a, yeah. What, what an honor to be doing this, but in the circumstances, yeah, you're it, trying to balance that. We were still trying to process the fact that he was gone. Yeah. Like us personally, the group. Yeah. Because I remember even before and after, we was like, man, this is so fucking weird. Mm -hmm. You know, like it was weird. Yeah. Like that he would, he was actually gone. It still doesn't feel it's, like, it, you it's, know what I'm saying? It's like, weird. I still watch Kobe videos to this day on TikTok oh, and yeah. stuff like that and never realized how much of a, a fountain of knowledge he was yeah. about basketball and oh, yeah. life and things of that nature. So oh, the shit he'd be doing now and talking about and being on yeah. like, guests on shows. It's like the guy was just fucking just pretty brilliant. A life in basketball. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and it sucks that I didn't appreciate that mm. until after he was gone and, and, and seeing all of these, you know, clips about him and, and how he speak and how articulate and, and knowledgeable he was. So yeah, it, it it's still weird, yeah. but it was an honor, man. It was an honor to celebrate that dude because he was more than basketball. He, he, was, he was a living lesson for all of us mm -hmm. on how to be strong yeah. and, and, and to be passionate yeah. about something to yeah. a fault. He loved basketball and he loved to, to compete and he taught others to do the same. And that's that's a lesson for life and anything. I don't care if you're into, you know, making pencils. You know what I'm saying? You can learn something from Kobe's tenacity yeah. and his unwillingness to say, "I'm not going to do that," but I am. He had a little bit of the uh, MJ. Uh, um, for sure. Right. Um, that's beautiful, man. Well, a very thanks for sharing about that. That was something that I always was like, man, if I ever get to meet uh, yeah, any yeah, of you guys, because yeah. I was just, I mean, again, like the fact that I was where I was watching it, and it was so. You know, overwhelming. That was uh, an ill experience, yeah. Insane. For the land of the free. And the home of the Uh, all right, we got about uh, five more minutes. Will you good? All right, cool. Sean, you good? Yeah. Before we close this out, I'm enjoying um, myself. Yeah, good. This is awesome. Yeah, it's good, right? <laughs> yeah, man, fun. Yeah, all right, good. Um, I want to close this out, and then we're gonna do one more thing special at the end. But um, mm -hmm. with this uh, inside the actor studio questionnaire, ten questions to get to know uh, Sean Stockman a little bit better. Um, and I'm gonna play James Lipton, R.I.P. And you'll play uh, yourself, Sean. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> I'm here with Sean from Voice to Men. Sean, what is your favorite word? <laughs> my favorite word yeah there's no right or wrong answer uh it's it's more of a phrase Jeez. fuck it yeah can you use it in a sentence um hey guys um we're going to do a performance uh that just has like 10 people in it and the microphones aren't that great but you know it's a good 
career move for us. This person is going to be there. That person's going to be there and that whole thing. Fuck it. <laughs> Perfect. What is your least favorite word? Um, another word. Another one is a phrase. I can't. Oof. I hate when someone tells me I can't do something. Bro, I'm me too. stubborn as fuck when it comes to that. If, whenever someone tells me I can't do something, I go out of my fucking way to not only do it, Oof. but to do it in front of the person that mm. told me I could not do it. Yeah. I am. I hate I can't. It's just fuel to the fire. Do not you. tell me I can't do something. Wow. You're just going to make me do it. Wow. All right. Good to know. <laughs> Fuck. Anybody else turned on? All right. Uh, what? Uh, what? <laughs> all right. What? Uh, speaking of which, what turns you on? Sexual or not? Doesn't like, have to be. Some people have said uh, big booties. Some people have said uh, kindness. So whatever, whatever um, speaks to you. Intellect. What turns you off? Uh, mean people. What is your favorite curse word? <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you more it of uses the, so many words? I know, some way, so many so, ways. Oh, yeah. Is, are you a uh, you hit it hard with the F, or you kind of bring it in? Depends uh, on the circumstances. Totally right. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's fuck, man. Yeah, I know, dude. Fuck. And then sometimes what the fuck, man? Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, dude. Fuck that. Sh you yeah. know what I mean? Oh yeah. Sorry, kids. I started saying fuck that noise recently, <laughs> which uh, I don't noise. know if that's like a '90s thing that I'm tapping back into. Fuck but, that noise. Yeah. Yo. Um. What, <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, what sound or noise do you love? Oh, an onomatopoeia? Uh, yeah, dude. <laughs> Sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll like walk by my, my daughter's room and she knows it's high Brooklyn. And I'll like, you know how you kind of like see like somebody walk by? Oh, yeah. And then like she sees just my ass poke out like that <laughs> real slow. And I'll go. And then just walk away, and she goes, "Dad, really? Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> it's not a real fart. Yeah, it's yeah just of course, a, yeah. It's a simulation. That's amazing. She, she she's how old? She's thirteen. You got two kiddos. Yeah, I have three. Three. I have twin boys that are twenty. That's right. And a thirteen-year-old daughter. Damn man. And she gets the joke. Of course, dude. Hey, she, farts will never not be funny. Exactly. Um, unless there was a story in Jacksonville where a woman stabbed her boyfriend in the stomach because he farted on her head. That wasn't funny. That's Actually, I'll take that back. That was very funny. Yeah. Because let's just be honest, if you get farted on during a fight, that's a TKO in the first round. Real so I tall. get I get why she stabbed him, but like, you know, Real going tall. to the source, that's, yeah, but, you know, you got to talk it out. Yeah. Farts should not lead to stabs. Here's another, and I've always said that. I, I believe that. But how about this? Here's another topic we could talk about. Yeah. And I saw this in the video. What is it about girls that don't uh, admit that they poop? Yeah, man. There's the like this myth, this stigma, this like it happens. We know what happens. We know what happens. The, the, I will say this: er, they're very stealthy about it. Yeah. Even, even my mom they, at 74, like she has a walk now that I can pick up on. You know, um, uh, where where it's like, where's I'm just like, where oh, the sack is or full. she'll go, I'll be right back. She'll <laughs> yeah, like kind of make a, a little announcement without telling you what's happening. Does she leave off a trail? Like, because uh, she I mean, pinches off a few. She's 74. Right, the butt control is starting to kind of lose <laughs> right, its, its right, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, where yeah. sometimes she'll just, and right. then she'll go, did you say something, sweetheart? Right. Like, that was your asshole wanting to chime in on the conversation, right. mom. You smell a little collard yeah. greens. <laughs> <laughs> As you walk by, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. what is that? I thought those were new flowers. Right. They just died. <laughs> Are we somebody cooking cabbage? <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. All yes. right. What, we what, talk uh, about that one what sound or noise do you hate? Sound or noise do I hate? Eight? Yeah, but that's that's a hard question. Never yeah. been asked that before. For sure, yeah. Um, a sound of noise that I hate. Uh, pass. Let me come back. Yeah, to that. for sure. What, okay. <laughs> what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Um. Wow, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh. Uh. What do you call it? Lecturing. Ooh, like be like at a what at a college? Yep. I would love to be a teacher. Um, what subject? Um, history and music. There you go. Wow. History of music or what? History and music. Love that. And blend of music history. Love that. Yes. What uh, profession would you not like to do? Uh, a soldier. Yeah. I, I don't know how they do it. That, that's a that's a different type of motherfucker. Yeah, man. That can like suit you're wired up. for something different. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a 
mentality that how about this i i would tell friends because if if i decide to do something i obsess over it because i try my best to be really good at it yep it's the same reason why i never became a drug dealer because i had a lot of friends that were drug dealers and i never wanted to do that because i know i'd be really good at it Oof. and to be really good at drug dealing you got to be a ruthless motherfucker so I never did that because if I just choose to do something, like go I go, in. I go all in, and I know I would probably be like El Chapo out this month. <laughs> like straight, no, no, no bullshit. Like, like I, if if I was a drug dealer, you would hear about me in the news because I would be a motherfucker. God damn. So to be a soldier, I would be Frank Castle. I'd be the Punisher. Wow, dude. Like, like it. I would, I would be good at it. Yeah, so, you, you so, got to channel that into your Dungeons and Dragons. But, yeah, because exactly. Yeah, you know, so so to be good at doing that, you got to be different up here. Totally. And I don't think I want to even dwell in those dark corners. Uh. Uh-uh. Yeah. Good answer. Fuck. All right, last one. <laughs> if uh, if uh, heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? My man. <laughs> oh, good answer. Good answer, Sean Stockman. <laughs> uh, you crushed that. All right, we're going to close this out. It's been amazing. Thank Appreciate you. you making time, bro. Appreciate um, it, man. This was fun. It was fun, right? It's good. It I don't fun. know how many of these you do, but we try I, to keep it I, loose. I don't do a lot of them. Yeah, I know. I know you don't. I Which appreciate Which is why it. I, I was had diarrhea in the mouth. Yeah. I just talked. <laughs> no, you're perfect. <laughs> it's. Uh, I love this because it's like, you know, it's a great way also just to like get to know uh, new homies and, and um uh, you know, obviously we're going on tangents, but it's like, you know, enough of the backstory and, and hopefully getting you to hit on some things that you haven't, uh, you know, hit on. Uh, this was shit that we before. would talk about if we were at a bar. Yeah, totally. That's what I like. And, and yeah. we would go drinking. Totally. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. what makes it cool. Just maybe getting louder at a certain f- few moments, right. right? We're like, oh, fuck. Dude, we know. You yeah. know Brad? <laughs> what? Wait, Walter? And the the fuck? Dude, Walter's my, dude, shots. My- <laughs> On Walter's name, you just dude. The amount of exactly. guys when they find out they know the same guy, they're like, "We gotta take a shot in his right, honor." It's right. so fucking all right. Uh, you gotta humor. You gotta humor me to close this out. Okay. Um, uh, it would be uh, an honor uh, to sing a little bit with you. Do you mind? Come on. Can we? I got uh, I got an instrumental for "Water Runs Dry," locked okay. and loaded. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna take the first part. We can chorus it up together, and then you know you come in hard okay. with that second piece. There we, we go. Can, we can close out after that, but Let's uh, go. yeah, all right. Let's go. Let's do it. Will hit me. All right, here we go. Here we go. Single out tomorrow. <laughs> all right, so I'll hit it here for. We don't even talk anymore. Hey. Yeah. Got that smoky stuff. Yeah. We don't even know what we are about. Yeah. Don't even say I love you no more. Yeah, I like that growl. <laughs> Come on, yeah. Saying how we feel is no longer alive. Yeah. Some people work things out yeah. and some just don't know how to you do give me, it. You give me Bruce Springsteen right here. Just don't wait till the water runs dry. We might watch our whole lives pass us by. Let's don't wait till the water runs dry. We'll make the biggest mistake of our lives. Now everybody, here we Don't go sway do from right baby. to left. Goes... Ooh, ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Here we go. No, no, now they can see the tears in our eyes. Yeah. <laughs> but we did not have faith in lies deep in our hearts. Oh, shit. Well, baby, that's a pain we can't hide. Because everybody knows that we're both torn apart. Why do we hurt each other? Why do we push love away? Let's don't wait till the water oh, runs dry. Oh, we might watch our whole lives pass us. Yeah. We might want to oh, yeah. let go wait till the water <laughs> runs dry. We'll make the biggest mistake of our lives. Give me Joe Crocker Don't right do here. Don't do it, baby. <laughs> Don't do it, baby. Yeah. Some people will work things out and some 
just don't know how to change. <laughs> Let's do it to the one who was trying. We might watch our whole lives pass us by. We might watch our Let's do it to the one who was trying. We'll make, make the, the biggest, biggest mistake, mistake of my life. Lives. Don't do it, baby. Don't do it, baby. Don't do it, baby. Yeah, I like it. it oh. You know, oh. you got range, man. <laughs> Let's go. You got range. Let's go. You got range. Sean, yes. my man, dude, that was fucking 1995 Adam is go. coming in his pants right now. Album in stores tomorrow. Uh, you're the man, dude. Uh, you're where you are on uh, IG. I know you don't post on socials uh, a ton, but yeah, uh, Sean Stockman official. Yeah, dude. Um, you're doing some IG lives from time to time, which is always fun. every once in yeah. a while. Yeah. I'll get on. I've, I've, that's awkward because I really don't know what to say a lot of times. Yeah, like, you're just looking at a screen, <laughs> I know, dude. and people are just so, expecting you, I guess, yeah. to do something provocative. And I'm even like, for a guy like you, man, just reading the comments, talking about some whatever. I mean, it's like, you know, if I had the, the followers that you got, I mean, it's you know, people just want to connect, you know. Yeah, and I'm and I'm cool with that. Yeah. So, um, tour dates at what boys to men.com? Yeah, boys to men.com, or you can go on boys to men, our IG. We have uh, our tour dates in the link. And, and stay uh, tuned for the solo tour. Yeah, yeah. Let's it's it's going to be in between, yeah. you know, boys to men dates. It's literally me taking off the boys to men hat and then putting on some other hat and then going on stage with a bunch of talented motherfuckers and just ripping for about an hour and a half or some shit. Can't wait. You'll probably never expect me to say. Fuck yeah. Well, hopefully that was my audition tape for uh, you singing are some in. backups. <laughs> you heard it. We got it on tape. He's in. Sean, I love you, dude. Yeah, love Thanks you. for coming through. Thank Good night, you. everybody.